Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome to Heavenly Vision Church. So happy that you decided to tune in. Grateful that you are watching. If you're watching live, uh, welcome. Please engage in the chat. And if you're watching later after the live is over, please make sure to still leave a comment, share what you got from this time. I'm super excited. Uh, I've had the opportunity to lead a uh, noonday all through the month of November. November is a great month. A lot of great things are coming up. And so I'm excited to continue in this time together. Uh, and so we're just going to pray really quick and then dive into um, some very interesting things. <laughs> I'll put it like that. Interesting things. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for my brother, for my sister who is watching this right now. Lord, I pray that during this time that they're able to learn something that they can apply to their lives immediately. That you give them the word that they need. That you give them the encouragement that they need. Speak to their heart. Speak to their heart. So that after this time, they can breathe a little bit easier. Their chest won't be so tight. Their heart, it won't feel so dark. But there will be ease that comes over them as they take time to accept what applies to their life and, and really just use it as another part of Yes, the building stone, like the foundation, it's like another layer, another layer, another layer. And so, Lord, I pray that this time blesses all of us, that we learn and that we grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I opened my eyes. I got this ring light on, and I opened my eyes. I was like, let there be light. So I was a little dazed. But I'm excited for the light, and I'm excited to dive into this word. Okay, so if anyone knows me for those who know me know me um you know that i am directionally challenged like <laughs> it's bad like addresses locations um landmarks streets they're just not my thing and i feel like i'm getting better at it <laughs> uh, i'm getting better at it but if i'm completely honest you can literally tell me, oh, it's on 85th and Broadway. And I'm going to be like, okay. And then you can keep explaining. You'd be like, oh, yeah, right past that corner. Uh, the church is pink. And the house next to it has all the cars on the lot. You know, straight across from that pink church is this parking lot. Um, um, and then it's like a store right next to it. And you can describe all the landmarks, all the things that I should notice. And I'm going to nod my head as if I understand and be like, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then once you're done, I'm going to say, um, can you text me the address? <laughs> and that's so embarrassing and so pitiful. I know. I know it's not good. I know it's not right. I know I'm a grown woman. But I will definitely tell you to text me the address. Even though you have explained to me the streets I should see, all the landmarks, all the all the details that I need to know, you have told them to me. But I will nod and I will ask you for the address. And then once you send me the address, I'm going to call out to my resident assistant, which is Siri. And I'm going to be like, hey, give me the directions to 243 West 85th Street. And she's going to hook me up. And I'm going to see multiple ways to get to that location. Um, and I'm going to pick my preference. And um, like I said, I'm getting better at it. But I rely on my assistant, which is Siri, a lot. And I think it's so interesting um, because I was listening to one of my marketing podcasts. And he was saying that within the next three to five years, even sooner than that possibly, voice is just going to take over and he gave some like real big statistics I'll, i can look at them but i although i do like statistics and numbers and i think you know it's good to look at i know they can be skewed sometimes but 
what I do when I hear a statistic or a number, I typically look at the people around me or even especially my children, right? And so after listening to this, I just kind of started paying attention to my children's behavior, my girls, who I love. Hi, girls, if you're watching this. But um, all of them, all of them talk to Siri. No lie. All of them talk to Siri, even my baby girl, who is at the time of this video, three years old, she'll be like, hey, and then she'll say the name and she'll be like, um, Siri, play baby shark. And lo and behold, baby shark will start playing. It's the most hilarious thing. Um, but she knows and the whole family knows how to talk to Siri. And seeing her do that, inspired this time that we have together and I thank God for being able to see that moment because it made me think my children have seen me example how to talk to Siri to get directions or to play songs or do whatever um but have they seen me example how to talk to Holy Spirit have they seen that do they know that? And maybe you can relate to this yourself, right? Like, ask yourself, do I talk to Siri um, or Alexa or um, I forgot what the Microsoft one is, but or any of those devices, um, um, do I talk to them more than I talk to Holy Spirit? Or maybe you don't do the devices. Maybe, you know, you actually pick up your phone or your laptop or whatever it is. So maybe you rely on your search engine more. But just really taking time to realize what we're doing, when we're speaking, how we're speaking it, and come to a higher level of awareness of ourselves. Because it's so easy to be consumed by the convenience around us um, to the point to where we don't notice. And please don't misunderstand. I appreciate technology. I thank God for technology. It is great. I think it's a wonderful tool. I'm not attempting to demonize it or make it seem evil. Like I said, great tool. But I think when we begin to prioritize these tools and seek them above the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we definitely, um, we have a problem. And so today, I want to challenge you <laughs> in this 10, 15 minutes that we are supposed to have together to, instead of saying, hey Siri, or um, hey to Alexa, or even, hey, to the people you rely on so you don't have to rely on Holy Spirit. I encourage you. I encourage you to talk to Holy Spirit. Hey, Holy Spirit. Hey, Holy Spirit. And not hey in a rude way, you know. I'm just saying it because it's it's catchy. It goes with the hey Alexa thing, but not hey in a disrespectful way. But really just crying out like, okay, hey, Holy Spirit, guide me into all truth. Not my version of the truth, not their version of the truth, but the truth that can only come from God. Reveal to me what I should do. Reveal to me what I shouldn't do. Give me the words to say. Let me know if I should be quiet. <laughs> and I promise you, this works. Holy Spirit is here for you. Um, I'm going to read from John 16. It says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me, all that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Let that sink in. 
<laughs> because literally, Holy Spirit is doing a few things in this. He's guiding you. Of course, that he will, but he will guide you into all truth. He's going to bring glory. Wow. By revealing, by telling whatever he receives from me. And this is Jesus talking. The spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. I think this is so powerful because I think we're at a place to where you right now, I think you are at a place right now where you're looking for answers. You need answers. I think, Jesus, you're upset, you're frustrated, <laughs> angry, and those emotions are leading you. Jesus, those emotions are leading you. So what's happening is, You're saying, hey, anger, how are we going to act today? Because at first we were talking about technology and all that, and that's true. Sometimes we rely on technology or devices or even people. But some of us are, are, are talking to our emotion, which I don't think you should ignore. I do definitely believe that you should feel your feelings and that we have to take time to deal with them, to... to to learn why and, and to get to the root, but we must do our best to not allow those feelings to control us. And, and some of us are being controlled. And for you, it may be like, like I said, hey, anger. Like, how are we going to act today? What's up? Let's turn up. Or it doesn't have to be anger. It could be, hey, pride. Who we flexing on today? Hey, pride. What you want to do? <laughs> or, hey, hurt. Who do, we, who do we want to try to burden with guilt because we're hurt? Hey, laziness. Who do you want to blame for us not being as far as we want to be? Mm. Hey, procrastination. <laughs> How you want to waste time and energy to avoid what we know we're supposed to do? And these hays, fill it in with whatever your hay is. Whatever you have been talking to and focusing on, figure that out. It's necessary. What am I talking to? What am I being consumed by? But I love how John 14, 26, John chapter 14, verse 26 puts it. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The helper. We all need the helper, <laughs> not a helper, not just a random thing or person or situation, but the helper, the one that has the ability to teach us all things, things that are not in a book or the internet or the metaverse or whatever, you know, whatever's going to come out. It is literally the helper, which is the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. No ulterior motives, nothing. Ultimately, he is glorifying Jesus Christ. Literally on assignment to tell you what is revealed. Literally understands the assignment <laughs> and does it. And you just have to be at a place where you're ready to receive it. So when things seem like they're not going so well, you say, hey, Holy Spirit. Not, hey, fruit snacks, right? Because some of us say, hey, food. I'm going to rely on you to help me right now. And then we be like overweight or like really constipated or bloated or whatever. 
Um, and when things seem to be go going amazing, still in those moments, hey, Holy Spirit, not hey, look at my bank account. And again, this is not to demonize things that I believe God has given us to enjoy. It's nothing wrong with fruit snacks, y'all. It's nothing wrong with having money in the bank. It's nothing wrong with these things, but we have to ensure that they are properly prioritized. These things have a purpose and they are not to consume us. And we don't rely on them to find out what we should do in our self-worth and who we are. We rely on the Holy Spirit that was given to us. That was given to us. Because we are so powerful when we choose to yield and receive the help that Jesus left so we could have it. Literally, Jesus was like, I'm out. He chucked up the deuces. He was like, bye. But I'm going to leave you something. And I find that so amazing because as, as awesome as Jesus is, he knew what we really needed. And also, I just imagine, because I told you at the top, I'm directionally challenged. But imagine if Jesus stayed and he's still here and we have to find a way to travel to see Jesus. Travel to see him, meet him, talk with him, like get the answers, like get what it is that we need. How long that would take and how long the line would be, like the line to get to Jesus. I feel like it would be crazy. And not to say I wouldn't love to chill with Jesus, but it is to say that I'm grateful that he left the helper. So that I don't have to, to feel stuck. And even when those feelings do come, I don't have to stay there. I know that Holy Spirit will come. I know that I'm inviting Holy Spirit in. I know that Holy Spirit will tell me, even if my battery's dead on my phone, like, hey, don't drive down that street. Hey, don't make that turn. Matter of fact, don't go out there. Go straight home. Holy Spirit will reveal these things to us. And it sounds so minute, but it's so major. It's so major. And I feel like we have to get out of what feels okay to do as far as our relationship and our walk with Christ. It may not look good. Like when we read the Bible, it's filled with some like, you did what? <laughs> like, the life of these people that we talk about and preach about and respect and and, and hold in high regard, um, especially Jesus, who did a lot of things but lived a submitted life. And so it didn't matter how it looked to other people or other people's opinions. What mattered is being in alignment with the Father. And so I'm so grateful for Holy Spirit, for the helper. And I hope that this time together has encouraged your heart to really seek Holy Spirit, to say, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. I know it's a funny song, Activate. I like HV versions better of Activate, that's so God. Uh, but Holy Spirit, I invite you in. Begin to really seek Holy Spirit. Read your Bible. Get you a good Bible. Pick up your Bible and read because even in those times where you're like, oh, Holy Spirit, should I forgive? Holy Spirit going to be like, uh, remember? <laughs> he gonna bring like, he'll bring scriptures to your remembrance. He'll bring sermons. He'll bring messages that you heard years ago that you thought you forgot about. He'll reveal and bring all that back to your remembrance so that you are in line with what God has for you. Not what you have for you because sometimes we think we know it and we think we want certain things and we out of pocket, we out of line. And so Holy Spirit will, will guide you. And I'm so grateful for it. And so I pray that this time has encouraged you to find direction in Holy Spirit, to seek, to seek Holy Spirit, to really build your relationship with God. 
And if you happen to accept Jesus as your personal savior, because it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and pray this out. And I encourage you, again, to say, Holy, Holy Spirit. Hey, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you. Because Holy Spirit is already in you. But sometimes I really feel like it's a difference when we when we speak it. It's, it's kind of like as a, as a parent, you know, I know my child may want something or need something and I'm kind of watching them, but when they voice it, when they say it out loud, it, it makes a difference. It, it, it shifts things. And so, um, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for my brother, for my sister. I thank you that we're able to really learn more about you, learn more about your word and begin to be taken out of our usual flow of the day to be interrupted in a good way in a good way to yield to Holy Spirit to yield to what you have for us and what you want to do through us and so Lord I ask that this time blesses and encourages and uplifts every individual that watches this in Jesus name amen I love you guys so much I'm so grateful thank you for tuning in for sharing for commenting uh, be sure to invite someone to noonday, Sunday service, a day of prayer. We have so many different things happening at Heavenly Vision Church. And so we encourage you to stay connected at hvcla.com. You can download the HVCLA app. Um, yeah, or you can subscribe right here. Subscribe, like, all those good things. But stay connected. Uh, because we believe that God is going to continue to do a mighty work here. And our hope and prayer is that it blesses and encourages you. Have a great week. Bye.